Hi, I'm Elise. I'm the user research specialist at Remedy, and today I'll be talking about building a user research process. This is something that will look completely different depending on a lot of different things, whether it's the size of the studio, the company culture, um, the size of the user research team, whether it's embedded or a centralized team. Uh, all of that will make for a different process. Uh, so here I'll take a look at the specific case of Remedy, a mid-site studio, multi-projects, working on AAA games with one researcher. Before I started, there was no user researcher and no UR department, so this will be a, a look at how step-by-step -step this user research process was built. Uh, I'm also not going to take a look at this from a very high-level point of view. I won't be describing pipelines and long-term plans on how to do user research at different stages of production. This is a more granular view of a user research process, how to start organizing research, uh, and instead of highlighting all the things that were great and presenting the successes of developing the user research at the studio, uh, instead I will go through everything that went wrong um, and what I learned from failing. So a little bit of context. Um, at Remedy, we work on a lot of different games. Uh, we recently released Alan Wake Remastered, and two years ago we released Control. We're still working on different projects that are different points of development uh, with different publishing partners. Some are multiplayer, some are single player, some third person, some first. So we're working currently on a lot of different games. So when I started in October 2018, there was no UR before. Uh, and there were several projects ongoing at the time. Control was getting closer to release, it was in late development, and there were a couple of other projects in development as well. Uh, and also different kinds of games at different stages of development. And, and when I started, I did start creating those pipelines and looking at the high level view of how research should be done. Uh, but research was really needed right now, especially on control, as it was not too far away from release. And my main goal was to get things rolling, start getting a process in place so that I could provide research for the teams. Um, so that's, so what was there when I started? Um, I didn't start from scratch and there was already a lot of interest uh, at Remedy in gathering player feedback. Uh, different teams were already doing some things here and there to get the players involved and learn from players' experience with the games. Uh, that means that I didn't have to fight very hard for buy-in when I started, as there was always already a, a certain level of interest, uh, and that made my job much easier when I started, because they were eager to start building this and incorporate it in their development pipelines. Um, they were eager to get players in as soon as possible. So what was happening before I started? Um, different disciplines were already doing some very interesting things uh, and gathering player feedback in different ways. Um, the process was already very collaborative. Um, QA was involved. There was some interested devs in as well. Um, the UX designer was part of the process. Um, and some producers were also helping up setting up uh, this process. Um, they were all working together and launching different uh, user research initiatives, um, different on each of the projects. So they, uh, so they had uh, already set up research in some form or another. Um, one of the projects, uh, on one of the projects, they were inviting already some external players to play parts of the game. Um, this would happen occasionally throughout development, um, and they would re recruit players through friends, family, uh, sometimes social media, uh, and players would come in uh, and they would be set up in a temporary lab that would typically be a meeting room. The devs would sit behind the players and observe them play, uh, and then they had a conversation all together or a survey they could fill in. Uh, and then the raw data which was shared with the teams. Uh, there was not so much in terms of analysis or report writing, uh, but there was already something done uh, to share the data with the wider team. On another project, there was uh, some internal research that was being done with internal players. Um, they were organizing company-wide play tests. Um, this was also a collaborative uh, a process where producers, QA, designers uh, would be involved in organizing this. Um, instructions were sent to everyone at the company and uh, anyone that wants to participate could join in from their desk um, and there was a, a survey available uh, to fill in to share your feedback uh, but most also shared feedback on public channels with the wider team and then the raw data was also shared similar to the previous one but here again there was no consistent analysis or ways of writing reports uh, but they were already finding ways of gathering data and sharing that feedback with the with the game team 
Uh, when I started, I spent some time talking to everyone interested and involved in the process that was already in place. Uh, the goal was to understand what they were doing and what their goals were with the process, uh, what they were trying to get out of it, um, and also what their struggles were with the process, what are the pain points uh, with it. Uh, so I, pen, I spent a long while listening to those involved in the process and interested in what doing and what doing research could bring. Uh, I also read through surveys, uh, through the reports that were being shared, to the instructions given to player. Um, I didn't want to start by erasing all the past work and efforts. So when I took uh, over the UR remedy, um, I simply started by taking over what they were doing and started finding very practical ways of improving their setup and building on top of what they had previously done. Uh, formalizing what they were doing, writing documentation on best practices, uh, methods and tools. Um, doing this was useful for uh, several reasons. Uh, because I was simply taking over what was being done, it wasn't a huge change in their workflows and it made it easy to build trust and relationships. Uh, it also meant uh, I already had an in with those that um, were previously organizing this research. Um, it was also useful in terms of tools and understanding how things work at the studio, how information flows uh, and how the different crafts and dep departments work together. Um, those that were involved in this before I started were also my first allies. Um, the ones uh, they needed to build a more formalized research process. So I had the needed points of contact, more knowledge on the studio's inner workings, um, and an uh, easy in, in already in their workflows. And I then started pinpointing what I believed was missing in this basic setup. Uh, I started with the lab itself, building a permanent research lab looking into what is the ideal lab setup, how can we fit that to what was possible at Remedy, um, also what will this lab be used for long term and making sure it has everything we need to do proper research with external players. Um, I also started on the recruitment process. Um, as I said, they were recruiting through friends and family. There wasn't really anything more than that. Uh, so I started with a survey and looking into ways to get a steady stream of playtesters that would be available when we needed it. Um, and I was also looking at the, the tools we could use uh, for live for streaming tests, uh, for surveys, for transcribing interviews, um, to help as well analyze the data and so on. Uh, and then when getting uh, external players in, there is all this legal and ethical aspect to it. So I spent some time creating the needed consent forms and pushed for proper incentives uh, to compensate player participation. And then uh, with this in place, the tools, the lab, the recruitment um, and the existing process, uh, it was easy to then start building on top of that and starting to pr propose other method methods and more extensive research projects. So I was doing this fairly soon after starting uh, and projects were ongoing and for control not so far from release. So things needed to pick up quite quickly. Um, although I had created those uh, high level plans and pipelines, I was uh, much more focused on what are the needs now uh, what do the game teams need in terms of research right now? Um, and the main goal was to get insights and player feedback now to, now to help the teams with the ongoing project. Uh, by, by taking this approach, I was aiming to show the teams the benefits of doing research, um, and I was trying to offer as much research um, as possible uh, and share insights quickly and very regularly. Uh, this was a way to get the teams used to research, to get them into a research rhythm uh, and exposing them to different methods and workflows involved in research uh, and start being part of the conversation. So how research was scheduled uh, was based on demand. So I received requests from designers and I would start planning from there. Um, this is something I am currently still working on, finding ways to implement those high level pipelines and better plan research ahead of time. Uh, but at the time, that's how we were doing it. Um, so once research was scheduled, the process was fairly simple and basic. Um, it was also meant to be quick as we were doing a lot of research on a couple of different projects. Um, I had sometimes uh, two tests scheduled in the same week. Um, so the process was designed to allow me to move from one research project to the next quickly. Um, and the first step was gathering information. Uh, what are we testing? Who do we test with? Uh, what feedback are we gathering? And I was doing that by pinging people on Slack or standing at their desk. Uh, I took all of that information I got and crafted a test, found some players and started organizing this. Uh, it wasn't documented much. I wasn't sharing research briefs. It was a simple, uh, communicated and flexible research. 
the test details was live streamed, but without much thought behind it, uh, I started streaming and shared the links with the research, with the game teams. Uh, and after that, there was an analysis and a report. Uh, the report was then shared on Slack with everyone on the project team, um, and there was, um, and then that's where the research ended uh, and moved on to the next uh, research that needed to be done. Uh, and I did that for a while, um, and I learned a lot from doing that. And this basic, simple process um, had some issues. So the first and main issue was that user research was not necessarily part of development, um, at least not fully part of the development processes. Uh, research is a shared service, uh, and I was organizing for several research for several projects, um, and I wasn't embedded in any of them. Um, as I've shown in the, in the process I presented earlier, uh, after a test was scheduled, um, a week before the test, I would start gathering information. Uh, but I wouldn't do much before that to understand the intended design of the feature or mission we would test. Uh, I would gather the ba ba basic and absolutely necessary information, like how long would they need to play or what mission are they playing, what topics of feedback are they interested in. Uh, but I didn't spend time getting a deep understanding of the game uh, and the intent behind uh, um, the experience. And that meant that often uh, the intended design was a bit obscure to me. Uh, when testing combat, for example, I didn't necessarily know um, in what context they expected a certain weapon or ability to be used, or what the difficulty level of a boss fight was meant to be, or how they intended players to navigate a certain level. Um, there was knowledge missing on my part. Um, the consequence of that is that I often shared insights uh, where I was told this is intended or I potentially missed a lot of issues uh, because I didn't have that deep knowledge of the game they were trying to build. Um, it's hard to know if players are experiencing things like they are meant to be experienced, seeing them, uh, if you don't know what it is. Um, knowing the game, uh, knowing the game well, uh, is something I learned from that early process. Uh, working on demand and not being fully part of the development process also meant the research was, wasn't fully in sync uh, with the game project milestones and sprints. Um, I didn't really know what they were working on at the time of the test, uh, what are the milestone goals and priorities that the test could help with, uh, what are the features that need special attention, um, and this led to some insights, um, some insights to not necessarily be relevant to their current goals. Um, so without a good knowledge of the game and the game production, uh, insights were not always as meaningful, relevant, and valuable uh, as they could have been. Uh, so at the time, um, I was also working in isolation. Um, although I was gathering information, a lot of the process was me doing my thing without much collaboration. Um, and this was mostly an issue with QA. Uh, I was involving QA in the process, uh, but not enough. Um, I would get a build without really knowing what could go wrong or what was the state of certain features or if there were any blockers. Um, I would play the game myself before the test, but I didn't have the time or the knowledge to do this thoroughly enough. Um, so during tests, uh, what players would experience could be a bit of a surprise. Um, the feature we were testing might be missing, or players could um, lose their weapons or get stuck in the geometry, uh, and I couldn't do much about it. Um, and that is definitely something I've spent, I spent uh, quite some time working on since. The other main problem was uh, assessing how useful the research was. Uh, as you saw in the previous slide, the research ended when the report was shared on Slack, uh, and that was it. Uh, nothing happened on my side after that. I had no way of, of tracking how useful the research was to the team. Um, I assumed it was somewhat useful um, as research kept being requested, but that's all I knew. I didn't know if the teams were discussing the research, uh, if they would work on a feature we tested, and if the reports were being read by the team. So not knowing whether the research is useful or not uh, makes it harder to get buy-in, uh, to show the value of doing research, to prove to leadership that this is something worth doing. Uh, and it also makes it um, harder to improve on the process. If I don't know whether the insights are relevant uh, and valuable, I can't iterate on my process uh, and make changes to ensure that the research is helping the teams make design decisions. Um, those issues might seem obvious to some of you, uh, something that I should have known would happen when setting up the process in this way. Um, but I was doing a lot of research at the time, trying to cover as much of the contents as I could in short periods of time. Um, and especially for the project 
closer to release, uh, and I wasn't doing a lot of reflexive work, uh, looking at what was working well, at what wasn't working well. Uh, I was stuck in the grind and stuck with this process uh, for a while. Uh, and although the issues with being out of sync with the teams and the game were becoming apparent, um, I didn't start fixing, fixing uh, this process until after Control was released. So when uh, I actually took the time to look back and talk with designers and QA and producers, um, looking at what was done, what didn't work well and what did, um, I could start looking into what I could do about it, uh, what could be improved. Um, so the main issue was um, lacking knowledge and being out of sync with the teams and the game intent itself. So what I did to work on that part, uh, I started by getting a lot more involved with the teams and what they were doing. Um, the research doesn't start when a request comes in and I start planning, it is ongoing. Uh, and, gather, and gathering knowledge is something that never stops. Uh, the game and the scope changes, evolves, uh, the features are iterate, iterated on. Um, and so being part of the conversation starts by just being there, uh, being present, uh, joining the conversation. Uh, sitting in on design meetings, on build reviews where designers play through missions and talk through the intent, uh, building relationships with producers uh, to understand what the teams uh, are working towards, um, what are the current pain points and worries, uh, and just stick around to understand how the design intent changes uh, and to continue building that in-depth knowledge of the game. Um, and that takes a lot of time. It's time consuming to be present. Um, I now spend a lot more time understanding the game and what the designers are trying to achieve. Uh, and that sometimes means doing less research, but making sure that the research we do is meaningful. Uh, there's no point in um, doing test after test after test if we cannot get as much valuable insights out of doing those tests. Um, this also helps uh, organizing and crafting the research. Uh, having that in-depth knowledge makes it easier to understand what to observe and what kind of feedback would be helpful for the teams. Um, one of the other problems uh, I pointed out earlier was the lack of uh, process involving QA. Uh, so we now have a, a process in place that we have iterated on. Um, there is a, a process on QA side that takes uh, user research into account uh, and builds um, our, the builds needed for research are now QA test tested with research goals in mind. Um, there is also a specific QA points of contact for each uh, of the projects. Uh, and that point of contact provides uh, a build with build notes uh, that involves workarounds of all the possible issues that could occur during a test. Um, QA also watches the live streams uh, on the day of the test to ensure everything runs smoothly and they, uh, and they also provide support if the players experience something unexpected. Um, and this has made running tests a much smoother process. Um, the other problem was not being able to track the impact of doing re user research. Um, and my initial process uh, stopped the moment the report was shared. So I spent some time working on the after. I also started uh, sharing reports in a way that involved a lot more summaries and bite-sized information to make it easier to pick out information. Um, I, I've also started doing test reviews after each test, uh, which is just a meeting where I present the main results and include clips of the test, uh, and we discuss the insights, what was useful, what wasn't, uh, what were they aware of, and what was a surprise to them, uh, what can be fixed and what can't, um, and we also discuss um, what insights could be turned into JIRA tickets. Uh, this is not the same for every project and depends on what tools the team uh, is using to track progress. Um, on one of the ongoing projects is JIRA. Uh, the goal is to track the player experience insights uh, and understand how that evolves during development. It's much easier to find an issue from a test six months ago in a JIRA than to find it in a dense lengthy report. Uh, this is helpful to track what happens to um, to an issue as designers can comment on what the intent was and explain if it's uh, progressing and mark the issue as fixed as well. So with you using the tools that the team is currently using themselves, uh, it makes it easier to be part of the conversation and gives the research more visibility. Um, the issue can be discussed, it can be shared, uh, it can be referred back to. Um, uh, if the same issue is occurring six months la later, we can easily retrace back to the last time it was tested. 
Uh, and in the process, there is now a lot more thought as well put in back into iterating um, and making sure we test features more than once. Um, once a feature has gone through some changes, we try to test it again um, and assess if issues are still occurring. Uh, this is, of course, uh, made easier when the research is part of the development process very early on. Uh, on Control, for example, we started doing research not long before release, and as there was not so much content and um, not much opportunity to retest the content, um, and assess how things were processing. This is something that has been much more part of the process now. And as you see, this process uh, is expanding, has changed, uh, and it's something that is still ongoing and moving uh, and not set in stone. Um, with each project, uh, we learn what works and what doesn't, um, and each time something fails, it's an opportunity to try something different. Uh, I'm continuing to find issues in the process and new pain points that need to be addressed. Um, for, for example, I can, I'm currently struggling to ensure the testing process is not as much of a burden on the game teams, um, and that is part due to not having totally fixed the out of sync with milestone problem. Um, the research is not fully part of production plans um, and is done in addition to what is planned for milestones and sprints. Um, so I am still reassessing and looking for ways to improve um, and evolve the way we do research. Um, we're also experimenting um, with new workflows, uh, especially with remote testing, testing for multiplayer games, trying out biometrics. Um, not everything ends up working out well, uh, but it's still worth uh, experimenting with. Um, I've also realized for, that each project and each team has different needs. Um, the process can be uh, taken as is to a team uh, and implemented the same way for every game. Uh, looking at how the team works, what do they need, what kind of project it is, what tools they are using, what data would be useful, and how best to share it. Um, all of that means that research gets adapted to fit, to fit each project, um, not always in big ways. Uh, the main components are always there, but in practical ways, there is always something different in how we organize research. So what's the catch? Uh, why am I presenting this step-by-step -step process while at the same time telling you it shouldn't be set in stone? Uh, I think this is a good way to show that it's all right to fail, it's okay to get it wrong, uh, to experiment and to learn and reassess as you go along. Uh, there are a lot of ways of gathering feedback from the people you work with, what their pain points are, uh, what needs to change, and be open-minded to the incoming feedback. Um, I don't believe our processes uh, should be fully set in stone uh, and, take, uh, and take that specific thing from one project to the next. Um, I think it's useful to consider what is actually not working at all, what can be tossed and redone, uh, and what can be improved and changed. Um, and that's it. Thank you so much for listening, uh, and feel free to get in touch with me uh, if you have any questions or feedback. Thank you. All this is possible thanks to our sponsors, Playtest Cloud, Player Research, Balsamic, Adobe, the book, How to Be a Games User Researcher, UX is Fine, Antidote, and Sketch.